I wanted to give you an idea about how I work uh, and how I kind of treat it as though I'm doing a painting. This is a piece that's obviously already, paint, already painted with silk, so I've got the basic colour to work on. And I'm trying to give the idea of a piece of textile just hanging over the screen. The, the real reason for having these colours is just to give the vibrancy of colour and playing with colours against each other. So to start it, just so I know where I'm going to work, I'd just like to mark out roughly um, with a pencil where the line will go. This piece actually curls round. So there's my dark line and then just to mark out my highlight. So this is just a chalk pencil and I just want to just put that there so I can see roughly where my highlight line is going to go. And I'm now going to put this in a hoop ready to do some work. Right, I just wanted to show you the foot I like to use. This is a horseshoe foot and this is specifically for free machine embroidery. And to do free machine embroidery it's uh, the darning setting. On most machines I'll have a darning setting and to achieve that the way you do it is you have to remove these. This is the feed dogs and somewhere on your machine you will have some sort of setting that will make it possible for you to get your feed dogs down. Um, See, so by getting your feed dogs down there is nothing to stop you moving your hoop around. It doesn't help the thread through like it does when you're doing a straight stitch normally. So you can move the hoop, hoop around freely and when you have your foot down, it doesn't touch the bottom. So when I have my material in there, I can freely move my material in it and that way I actually draw with the sewing machine. I've put this in a wooden hoop for the moment. Um, it's not my favourite hoop. My favourite hoop is a spring hoop like this. But unfortunately, when there's a lot of embroidery already on both sides, sometimes you just can't get it in. And I have to put it in a hoop like this. But I always feel it is tighter when I'm in a hoop like this. But uh, I'm going to put this under the machine here. And you can see how I will work this. I want to try and give the idea of shade and light. This little tiny section that I'm going to work in, I want it to appear to be curling over a little bit. So I'm going to put dark down this side, but have it lighter here because I've got a dark edge. So it feels like it's curling over. So I start off by drawing a line to work from, otherwise I get into a complete mess. I'm marking out the edges and I'm adding in my highlight. I like to start by creating a straight line. This gives me a clear line to work down. And I like to work with about five different colours. And this is the way I've been taught to paint when I was younger, when I was painting. And you have a highlight, a low light, and then colours in between. And this gives you the colours to blend it. And I start off with my dark lines and I curve them inwards towards the centre. And then I go back down with a second line and this I curve a little bit more. And this gradually creates the curve that I'm looking for to create the three dimensional effect that I want in this piece of work. I apply this technique to all my work basically and this is the way I create all the three dimensional effects I get in my work. I'm then coming into the other side um, with my dark thread again and I've done my line to work from and I'm bringing a little curved shape in towards the centre in the opposite direction and I start off with a, th a quite a thick little line and then I go through it again with a thinner line and the reason for that is it then makes it much easier to blend the next colour into the thinner line and gives it a much more smooth effect. Then I add my highlight in and I make that thick in the center and thin at the edges. Now that I've got my highlights and my low lights in, I start thinking about the blending. And this works in the same way, you gently curve it in towards the center, making the colors that you're blending together, the darkest colors, denser together. And then gradually as I'm bringing it towards the centre, it's a little bit thinner. And this allows me the space I need to blend in the last colour to bring it into the centre. It's quite important as you're doing this to make sure that your curves 
are aimed towards the same angle as the center line goes so it looks as though it's a line running all the way through from one side to the other and that gives you the cylindrical effect that you're looking for so you do need to take care and time over doing this and it's actually easier when you've got longer curves to do than when you've got shorter curves to do there's only a tiny space within this finally i go in with the lightest color and this one i bring through the white color that i've got at the top in fact it's a very very light blue and uh, then i go to the sides and i build those up between the lighter and the darker color but you always run it through the top color so that it appears to run smoothly the whole way through and it gives it the sort of final polished look you want um, so the whole thing looks like it's a smooth line running through and the last thing i'm doing is putting a dark line a dark line of straight stitching between this curve and the previous curve in the ditch so it separates them and gives them a more three-dimensional finish and here are some curves finished together hopefully looking like a piece of finished fabric